The Old Testament reading for this, the baptism of our Lord and the first Sunday after the Epiphany is taken from the prophet uh, Isaiah, the 42nd chapter. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break. And a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his law, the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. To open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Him, I am well pleased. The 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The text for my sermon this morning is from the Gospel reading of Matthew. Now, it may have been another sunny day along the banks of the Jordan, another day of the crowds coming to hear the voice calling in the wilderness, dressed in coarse camel's hair with only a leather belt, another day of John baptizing with water in the river as people confessed their sins. A baptism of repentance, of forgiveness of sins. But just another day until Jesus came. Now, why would Jesus come to be baptized? And that puzzled John. In fact, he tries to talk Jesus out of it because John knew his own sin. He needed the Messiah to bring him forgiveness. Why then did Jesus come to be baptized? What sins did he have that needed to be washed away? Now, we all know that Jesus is sinless and holy, just like Peter in his first letter describes Jesus as a lamb without blemish or defect. All his thoughts, words, and actions were pure all the time, perfectly in line with God's law, perfectly righteous. Even unbelievers will often talk about how good Jesus is. But now, dear friends in Christ, let me tell you what Jesus is really guilty of. He is guilty of disobeying his parents and talking back he was guilty of losing his temper and lashing out with his words. He was guilty of loving money, envying what others had, trusting health and wealth for happiness. He was guilty of indecent thoughts, mean-spirited words, loveless actions. He was guilty of neglecting God's word and of misusing God's name. He was guilty of laziness in prayer and slowness to speak God's truth. He was guilty of dishonoring God and not holding him in the highest reverence and regard. Now, this should sound familiar because these are your sins and mine that I have listed. That's what Jesus was guilty of. The sins that you and I have committed. Now, I don't mean that he did the same sins we do. He didn't. He himself never sinned. But all our sins were charged against him. And Jesus was guilty of eating that forbidden fruit, of naked drunkenness, of adultery with Uriah's wife, of betraying the Son of God. Yes, the sins of Adam, Noah, David, and Judas. He was guilty of genocide and mass murder, and the sins of the worst criminals and tyrants. Every sin was charged against Jesus. That's why Jesus comes to be baptized, to wash away all the sins of the world, yours and mine included. And yes, what we know to be true is correct. Jesus is holy. He did not sin, not even once. He was not a sinner. But he was guilty of all the sins of the world, for they were all charged against him. Just as Isaiah says, the Lord has laid on him all the iniquity of us all. And just as the apostles preached, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. That, dear friends, is what we believe. Because God has revealed this through his word, that all your sins were charged against Jesus. He carried your guilt to wash it all away. Look, my dear friends, and see Jesus at the Jordan. See him baptized with water. His baptism is yours. For he has stepped to your side. He has come to take your place, for he is the Christ, the anointed one. Come to carry the sins of the world, including all of yours. Believe, my dear friends, believe that your sins were charged against him. He carried your guilt, so his, so his baptism is yours. And in his baptism, you have been washed clean. His baptism is yours, for you too have been baptized. Just as water was put on Jesus, so also you have been baptized with water. As you contemplate your baptism, your faith sees that water stained red with Jesus' blood. Only his blood poured out for you from his wounds on the cross. Only his blood gives baptism that cleansing power. Only the lifeblood of the Son can wash us clean. Jesus' baptism publicly shows God's Son taking our place all the way to the cross, suffering our God-forsaken hell as he hung there, dying our death. 
So see that water of baptism dyed red with his blood, the cleansing flood that washes you clean and rescues you from death, for Christ's baptism is yours, and he carried your guilt. Christ's baptism is yours, and now, what do you see and hear happening at Jesus' baptism? Well, we see heaven is open. The Spirit comes down, making himself visible in the form of the dove, and the Father speaks for you to hear, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. You see, Christ's baptism is yours, and since those things happened at his baptism, they happen at yours. But not in an outward, physical, visible way, but, but that doesn't make it any less real or true. At Jesus' baptism, God sent these signs for physical eyes and ears to see and hear, so that at your baptism, the eyes and ears of faith would know that they are happening just as surely. Yes, my fellow Christians, since Jesus' baptism is yours, when you were baptized, the Holy Spirit came down into your heart. Now, no one could have recorded it, for God works these marvel this marvelous miracle not as a spectacle for people to gape at, but as a promise for faith to grasp. The Holy Spirit came down into your heart through the water and word of baptism and gave you rebirth. Yes, you were born dead to sin from the sinful flesh of your parents, handed down from Adam. You were born again of water and the Spirit, for you were baptized in his name, in that name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And don't listen to those who say to you that you need a different baptism to really get the Holy Spirit. They have, kind of, they have twisted the truth. Simply see what happened when Jesus was baptized with water. It's even depicted on the front of the bulletin here where Jesus... Um, there, the, the Holy Spirit comes down, is seen as the dove. So also, he comes down upon you when you were baptized with water. Just as Jesus, is, Jesus was. For Christ's baptism is yours. And just as the Father spoke from heaven at Jesus' baptism, so also your faith heard him say at your baptism, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. For in baptism, whether male or female, you were reborn as a son of God, with all the rights and privileges of sonship. You became an heir of heaven, and with heaven opened to you. The Father, Father's love pours over you as he cares for you day after day. He even declares, with you I am well pleased. But how can that be? Didn't we begin life corrupted by the sin we inherited from Adam, empty of all good? Aren't you and I still sinners even after our baptism? Don't we daily sin much and deserve nothing but punishment? Or are we lying each time we come here on Sunday to confess our sins? Well, no, we are not lying. We are sinners who have earned death and hell. But my Christian friends, just as Jesus carried your guilt, so also through baptism you share his status. For Christ's baptism is yours, and at the baptism, and at your baptism, the Father declared, You are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Of course, Jesus is uniquely the Son of God, of essence with the Father. He is the only begotten. He is the Son from all eternity. We don't become divine through baptism, but he does share his status with us, his status of righteousness that stands before God. That's why he, the eternal Son, also became flesh, and as the God-man was baptized in the Jordan. So his baptism is yours. You share his status. Now, when our heart of faith hears those words from the Father, it is only the old self lingering in us that wants us to use it as an excuse to indulge our sinful desires or put off growing in faith. <clears throat> but your new heart, generated by the Holy Spirit, rejoices in that good news, daily cherishing this precious message, God's word and sacraments bring. And what reason... And what a reason for us to say no to sin and live for God. He calls you his own dear son. He makes you an heir of everlasting life. 
Death has been drowned in the waters of baptism. Heaven opened. The Spirit poured out on you. So what if following Jesus brings earthly pain or loss? You are God's son and heir. What earthly treasure wouldn't we be ready to sacrifice since our Father's love will not fail to take care of us, his dearly loved sons? And what hope we have even in the darkest, loneliest times. For the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are with you. You've been baptized into his name, for Christ's baptism is yours. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.